this has to have been one of the most fraudulent stage profiles I have seen. Arctic Race of Norway. Okay, yeah, there's a couple of climbs early and it's a rolly parkour. But if you dive into the last five kilometers, it doesn't look too bad. The last kilometer, if my maths is right, is like 1.2% average, like a barely noticeable false flat drag. Yes, there's a double left-hander in the last 600 meters, but that's not that hard. I know there's over 3,000 meters of climbing, but this ended up being way harder, at least for the pure sprinters like Bol and Gronovec, and then the profile first suggested. Got rainy conditions, 12 degrees, arm warmers out in August, lovely stuff. Got Mate, Polka, Bassett, Culverwell and Lunders in the break. Uskatel there. I'm actually in the Basque country right now. I'm in Bilbao. Oh, I'm in San Sebastian. I actually went to Bilbao today to the Guggenheim Museum. I'm sure the riders probably would have rather the temperatures where I am. And you know, X for chasing. Alberson have got, I think, Ballastet here, who's not a bad guy for this parkour. Bassett was good in Andalusia, the guy on human powered health. He came second to Herogots on an uphill finish. He takes the KOM jersey after the first stage. He was the best in the KOM sprints. And yet, yeah, it's a race where Dylan Turns, I think, should have been sent if he was able to, if he's in decent shape. Taco looking, I mean, that beard, he makes him look so wise uh, for Intermarche. They were riding one would think for Quinton Hermans, who came second in Liege, based on Liege, won the flat sprint against Wout van Aert uh, this year. And with all the punchy climbs, you'd think they could drop the likes of Gronovec. And Ernest curious that he's here as well. And I think he's here for training post Tour de France because there's not much in the parkour in the next three days for him, even not including this stage. But he's got some really important one-day races coming up for bike exchange relegation ambitions. Nalens for Israel, speaking of relegation, he tried to get in a move and Reinders joined him. I think he's been signed by... Alperson de Koenig or Quickstep Alpha Vinyl, they now share all the same names, so it's very difficult to understand which team is which. And yeah, Israel would have been hoping for maybe Simon Clark GC here or, or Nalens, but Clark lost two minutes today, so that's going to be almost impossible to bring back. Culverwell won the first intermediate sprint, and Uno X. It's the home race, Norwegian team, big ambitions. They got Tobias Johansson, probably the favorite for GC with the punchy finishes here. Although Bike Exchange have Schultz, who looked very good in the Tour de France, and the brakes started to disintegrate. Lunders dropped, Mate dropped. Unix wanting to make the most of these punchy climbs before the actual finish, pacing hard, but not going for the KOM or intermediate sprints. Bergado taking that, you'll remember he won that Paris-Nice stage six ahead of, I think, Pedersen and Wout van Aert. And is that a case bowl? I spy. So some sprinters were making it around this parkour. Bowl was there into the last, I think, six kilometers. And this is what I don't understand. Tobias Johansson, I think this is him, right? He loses, he went through a corner really fast. Schultz was behind him and laid off. I think Johansson had been attacking. But he doesn't crash. And yet I'm looking at the results and he's lost nine minutes 30. And we, this is like with eight Ks to go. So that's virtually impossible. And I don't know if there's if he changed bike and that was a mistake and the results haven't been updated yet, but if that's the case, his GC is done. Unix started attacking themselves and that put Case Bowl and DSM under a lot of pressure. Donovan had been pacing for Case Bowl, but yeah, Johannesson, I don't know what's going on. I checked Unix Twitter and no, no mention of. Anyway, last kilometer, into Marche, they've got I mean, more than two riders, another ride deep, leading out for Quinton Hermans, I believe it is third man, but he decides Eh, too early and they're going to the right and I don't want to follow the wheel. So he lets the wheel go because basically his second last man shut off his back wheel to Hermans, who's now eating wind and a bit deeper. And this is what I mean. Like the profile said it was 1%, but it doesn't look like 1% average to me. And the way they raced it as well and the way guys seemingly weren't able to really kick. And here's the first look back into Marche. It's weird. This is always curious to me how riders... And they go about to go through the big left-hander here, and then the, the uh, last man does it. Riders will look back, see that the man they're supposed to be leading out isn't there, which happens again here, and they're like, meh, I'll just kick and continue kicking anyway. It's it's really curious to me why they keep doing that. I mean, surely the play here would be to realize Hermans isn't on your wheel, stop, conserve some energy, and maybe go back and try and bring him back forward rather than making it more difficult for him to come forward because now Intermarche's last man finishes 500 meters to go, and this is another weird thing. It's still a pretty big group. We're still talking 40, 50 riders deep, maybe. 
and I'm thinking for sure, with no lead outs, no control, a little uphill drag finish, it is the perfect time for a finesse attack. Someone's going to attack and get away in this sort of period of hesitation. Bike Exchange have four riders, no Groenewegen, but maybe the plan was to lead him out, but now everyone's got their own role because there's no Groenewegen here, no bowl. We have Capio for Arkea, but he's not really got a lead out either. Zingle for Cofidis, who's been pretty much got no one to lead him out. He's on the right-hand side. He's been surfing wheels, and same with Sirius for the Astana rider pretty well. Bergado, who went for that intermediate sprint, he's still here. And I think it's Ballastet, the young German, for Alperson de Koenig, launches initially. He's marked, and then Bergado's third wheel. Zingle moves up into fourth wheel. I think he's fighting shoulder to shoulder with Colioni for bike exchange, and it's Nick Schultz probably their GC hope, who's sliding himself up from deep on the right-hand side. And then when the camera angle changes, about 150 metres to go, you can't see him now. And then when it pans right, we see the Axel Zingle. What a name, by the way. Absolutely cooks everybody. It's become a meme at this point, because on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, if you've been listening to that for the last year or so, I've been talking non-stop to the point where it's become a meme about this young, talented French rider on Cofidis. And he wins. Dot Pro stage at Arctic Race. I don't know if he's... I mean, the parkour is pretty good. Can he hold on for a good GC result for Cofidis? They need it for relegation. They won uh, GC at Toulon with Guillaume Martin. So a great day for them on this Thursday. Zingle wins at a Bergado than Sirietsa. Capio, I think, was fourth than Schultz. But yeah, just a much harder stage than it looked on the profile on my desktop assessment. With the rainy conditions, heavy roads, the way it was raced by Uno X and Co., just a hard stage. Hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you with stage two tomorrow. Ciao.